Hi everybody, this is Brendan from Common Motor, common-motor.com on the internet. Today we're going to be doing a diaphragm change on CB350 carbs and CB360 carbs. Alright guys, so we're going to talk about changing the diaphragms on the CV or constant velocity style carburetors that are on the Honda CB350s and CL350s as well as the 360s CB, CL, and CJ. Uh, now they're pretty similar between each other. This is a 350 carb right here. And uh, 350, 360 diaphragms, they're similar. Uh, we've had a lot of questions from folks asking us how do you change them out because they have some like having a little bit of trouble. We're going to do the 350 one first because it is the tougher of the two, but we'll do the 360 afterwards and uh, show you how to get all the pieces put together. Um, it's actually pretty simple uh, once you learn the process or get into it. It should only take a few minutes per slide. I will say the 350 one is a lot more cantankerous than the 360. We'll see how long it takes us, but I don't know, five, ten minutes. It's a pretty short process once it's actually done. And what you're gonna end up with is um, a bare slide, much like this one here. Um, it has a groove at the top, which is about a quarter inch tall, which is where our new diaphragm will sit. So our ultimate goal is to get off the diaphragm as well as the retaining rings that hold the original diaphragm in place and get to this groove so we can put the new diaphragm on. So, quick look at some of the tools we're gonna use. Uh, and a pair of wire dykes, some tin snips, needle nose and regular slip jaw pliers. Got a screwdriver handy because the, the needle on the 350, uh, 360 slide has to come out with the screwdriver. And we got some super glue because we're actually going to end up using the super glue to hold the new diaphragm uh, to the slide body. So uh, let's just jump in and get in and start with the 350 slide first. So the 350 slide is... Uh, and here, here's the construction. We've got the slide body, we've got the needle. We'll go ahead and take the needle out here in a second. And then we have our diaphragm. And that's, you know, this island is actually in good shape, but for the sake of the video, I'm going to tear it off and show you guys. On the bottom slide, side of it here, we have a, a plastic retaining ring. This one's kind of faded to kind of yellow color. Uh, they're usually white, yellowy kind of thing, but it's plastic. On the top side here, we have this metal kind of, I don't know, cup bowl shaped ring. Uh, a lot of folks think that this piece here is actually part of this metal slide here. <clears throat> In fact, they're two separate pieces and what we can do is look real closely and I'll point it out to you with a pen. So we have our, our ring here and then we see we have this edge here and this is like a, like a mushroomed or peened over rivet head edge that holds this ring to the slide body. So uh, this part is is ring and then this little ring here is slide body and then when I look at my 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 empty one here you can kind of get the same idea that it has this a peened over edge on it so uh, when we cut this off we got to be very careful not to nip this part of the of the slide when we're taking off this uh, metal ring here now this particular 350 slide comes from a later style carburetor um, it has a kind of a curved top to it. The early style carbs have a more square cut to them. Same thing though, the, the same thing applies to them, they're just a little different manufacturing style. So I'm gonna start taking this apart and, and get into it. So hopefully you already have your, your, your needle out of this thing and we don't really need to be watching this. But, all right, there's our, our top hat. Make sure not to destroy that, it's a very important piece. Retaining clip, needle, done. All right, this pains me to do this because this diaphragm is <laughs> in good shape, but uh, sake of the video, I'm just gonna go ahead and just start tearing the diaphragm off because there we go, it's done. Because uh, we're gonna change it. So just tear the diaphragm off. And as I kind of get the, the pieces out of it, you can see a little bit better how it's constructed with uh, the, the rubber was sandwiched between uh, the plastic and the, the metal ring here. Uh, so a lot of times it's easier to try to cut one off of the other. It's 
there, there's, there isn't really a, a great method to it other than start to snip it off. Uh, what I will attempt to do is to, I'm gonna take a marker here and I'm gonna make a line there, I'll make a line about 180 from it. And we're gonna see if we can cut it here and here and then remove it in two halves or maybe multiple pieces to come off. So, mm. Let's see what happens when I get into it with the old wire dikes. So I'm making sure to only nip this edge here. Give it a wiggle. I'm starting to cut the plastic as well. Well, that's okay because the plastic's going to come off. All right. I can see that I cut through the, uh, the aluminum here. Let me see if I can get it to peel off. I might be able to get it in one piece. Look at that. All right. That's a good side. Let me see if I can get through the plastic. I'm trying to just do it delicately so I don't mess up the slide. Let me see if I can get the plastic. Right over there. Come on. The plastic tends to be really brittle and break. Easy. No. I'm gonna come and do another slot cut here and see if I can go back with my original plan. Make sure you guys can all see that. Come in there. Bend him out of the way. We did this one on a, an earlier set. The early 350 carps are a lot harder to, to cut that deal on. Cut this on because the ring is a lot thicker. Material wise, come on. There we go. One half. Okay, that was the harder part. Let's get this plastic deal. Is removed and we'll see we have a there's our groove there it's about it's a little less than a quarter inch maybe about a quarter inch tall and uh, we'll get ready to put the new diaphragm on uh, I did kind of you know if you look real closely I did kind of bend that up just a hair uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my brass hammer and gently flatten that back out and then maybe take a little bit of sandpaper just to keep that edge from being sharp but overall pretty successful we didn't actually nip it which was what I, my main concern was we didn't nip that that edge there so let me get the the brass hammer we'll get that straightened out and then we'll put the diaphragm actually we'll get it straightened out we'll do the 360 and then we'll do actually the diaphragm install because the diaphragms per per slide go on the same way they're they're identical on the install so we fix that and then we'll do the 360 one All right, so I straightened out my edge, sanded it, got it clean, but there's still, if you look real closely, a little piece of rubber that's in there. So there we go. Gonna make sure all the pieces are out and that that groove is really clean. If, if yours happens to have a lot of corrosion or, or dirt in there, uh, make sure you get in there with some sandpaper or a scotch Brite pad and get that groove as clean as you can get it. So uh, I wanna put that one aside and we're going to get into doing the, uh, the 360 slide here. I'm going to go ahead and remove the, the needle and the needle holder by the side. And uh, much like the 350 one, it is the, the diaphragm sandwich between these two plastic rings, one here, one here. And uh, so it pains me to do this, but... Tear that diaphragm off of there. Look at that. All right. So now we can see the rings a little bit better in the sandwich. Uh, the good thing on the 360 is it's a lot easier to, to take apart than the 351s. Uh, so I'm just going to clip it here. I'll clip it 180, and I'll, hopefully they should come off without a problem. There we go. Nice clean cut. One. I'm going to hold it so it doesn't pop apart on me. And. 
Nice clean cut too. Look at that. Done. And uh, that groove on this one looks uh, looks pretty clean. A lot of dirt in it. I might hit it real quick with a Scotch Brite, but uh, overall, pretty clean. Same thing, like on the 350. We got that that groove there that we're going to put the new new diaphragm on. All right, so we're going to do the diaphragm install on the on the, uh, the slides here. Uh, we're going to actually do it on the 360 one. It's a little bit bigger and easier to see. But the install for the 350 is identical. Uh, we're going to be putting the, the diaphragm onto the grooves there. And uh, it's like putting the tire on a, on a rim. So we'll put the 351 aside because, again, the, the diaphragm install is identical. Also, on all of the diaphragms, they're marked what model they fit. Uh, this one says 360 on it just to make sure you got the right diaphragm for your bike. A lot of people actually order the wrong size diaphragm for their for the bike. So double check that way. Yeah, this is a real simple process as far as like put a tire on a rim. The diaphragm is going to come on from the top. And uh, the middle part of the diaphragm here is pretty thick. It's, it's a, and it fills that, that groove. How easy that was to install. Uh, the, the, the numbers face up and the diaphragm edge has this little bead on it. It faces down. So that's the proper orientation of the the diaphragm on the slide. It's 350 the same way. Just gonna work it down nice and gentle. Look at that. Cool. See how that's on there and I got a little bit of protrusion of the uh, slide coming out the diaphragm. All right, last part, super glue. All right, we're not gonna need much. All I'm gonna do, I'm gonna peel this edge back between the diaphragm and the slide and put a drop on one side and then put a drop 180 degrees apart from each other on it. So let me peel this kind of edge here, just like that, okay? Put one drop right in there, just like that. That's it, I'm going 180 from it, same deal. Peel the edge back. Drop the super glue right in there. And that's it. Let the glue dry. And uh, that would mean the diaphragm is installed on the slug. So yeah, that's the installation process. Uh, another note here. On the bottom of the slide here, we have this is the main hole where the needle comes out, but we also have these uh, um, other vent holes here. Uh, the original diaphragms had a, had a little indexing tab, a little rubber tab on it. You guys see that right there, which when you drop the, the slide with the carburetor, it had an orientation of which way the, the, uh, the slide faced. The, the new diaphragms do not have the tab, but what you need to note is those two holes need to face towards the choke. So we are, our chokes here and our throttle butterflies here the holes face towards the choke or to the air cleaner side of the, the carburetor. So when you drop it in, you just make sure you, you orient the, um, the clocking of the rotation of the diaphragm and slide towards the choke. All right, so I hope this uh, video kind of shows you how to get the diaphragm installed and answers a lot of questions for you guys out there with 350 and 360 carburetors and how to install the diaphragms. It's a pretty simple process. Uh, 350 is a little bit more difficult than the 360. Definitely a good set of wire dykes or uh, um, tin snips are, are important. Make sure to be careful not to nip the top of the, the diaphragm slide, the edge there where the diaphragm seals. A uh, drop of super loop goes a long way. And uh, make sure when you drop the slide into the carburetor, you have it oriented in the correct position. Thanks for watching. This is Brendan from Common Motor, common-motor.com. Make sure you follow us on Facebook. Uh, Instagram, sign up for our newsletter on the website, and we'll catch you guys next time. And also subscribe to our YouTube channel. Arr. There's all in the light of education.